Welcome to Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. Today, we're going to make my racket look like a pro stock. Stay tuned. All right, coffee sponsor of today, Henry Lowe, L-O-H. Henry writes, Hi, Harry. Thanks for the suggestion on strings for my new Regna. Can't wait to get it strung and give it a tennis spin. Please get Leonard a coffee, too. Big smiles, Henry. All right. Well, congratulations on buying one of the best rackets out and made ever. Um, I wonder, where did you get that racket? Did you go to Japan? I hope you did. Then you had a great time out there, I'm sure. And that Regna would be just the icing on the cake for your whole experience. Uh, if you want to be my coffee sponsor of the day, network is buymeacoffee.com forward slash tennis spin. If you want to support the channel, super thanks is the way. Link is below. Thank you so much, Henry. And guys, thank you for keeping the coffee train rolling. We got one of my favorites, Anniversary Belen today from my people at Pete's. All right, so as you guys know, I play with the Blackout Extended. Here is a Blackout. And this is what it looks like. As you can see, there's gloss here and there's dullness here. My man Dan, the science man, said, I can gloss that up for you and make it look fully glossed. And I'm like, okay, I would love to see that. All right, so my man Dan is here. Dan, thank yes, you sir. for joining me this morning. Thanks for inviting me. Um, so we got one of my Blackout Extendeds, brand spanking new. And Dan, we're going to make it look like a pro stock. Yes, we are. Aren't we? Yes, okay. sir. Okay. So we're going to gloss it up. But before we do that, we're going to check the weight and balance and swing weight before we gloss it up. Because why, Dan? Well, we want to see how much difference the uh, the clear coat makes and uh, does it affect the weight balance or swing weight. We know it's going to add a few grams of weight pretty evenly across the racket, but it'll be interesting. You know, if it's a if it's a ton of weight, it's something to be aware of before you take a racket that you already think is at the heavy end of what you like, you know. So before you throw a few more grams of clear coat on it, you might have a racket that's a little lighter and you think a little, little bit of weight would, would do it some good, but it's definitely going to look cooler. Okay, great. So I've I've known people who've painted their rackets. They've used they've usually taken like model paint and kind of you know did this or you know used the hand. And I've actually had somebody that actually took the racket to a um, body shop and they did the whole thing. What are you gonna do? So I've actually tried previously using just your uh, regular clear coat out of a spray can. And unfortunately, it's it's just the paint just isn't hard enough mm. uh, out of the spray can. And so when you you know when you hit a tennis ball on the frame, it can kind of scuff the clear coat a little bit. So I've actually got a uh, an air gun at home, and I've used you know professional two part paints before, and I know they're substantially um, harder. Uh, but for those of you that want to try this and don't happen to have an air gun or a spray a spray uh, thing at home, I did a little homework and uh, found this called Eastwood. And it's a uh, professional two-part paint. And the way it works is there's a little uh, little valve under here and a little uh, plastic thing here. And you take the plastic thing and you punch the valve down. And there's actually a hardener and a clear coat, coat, coat paint in the can, just like the professionals use a two-part paint. You shake it for a couple minutes. You can, you can spray it on just like an air gun. It dries very quickly and it dries much, much harder. I've used this uh, on, on tennis rackets and it doesn't scuff, it doesn't chip. Um, and so it's a, a probably four or five times harder than a regular clear coat. Uh, it's a little more expensive than, you know, the cheap stuff you buy at the auto store, but it's uh, really high quality. 
It only lasts 48 hours. It's a, so once you, once you pop the thing and shake it up, you've got 48 hours to use it on whatever you want. Uh, it'll do, I think it'll do at least 10 rackets um, or, you know, whatever else you want to clear cut. Okay. So it's kind of like epoxy then. It's two parts. Yeah. When you pop the thing, it gets mixed up and you shake it up to mix it up and you got Two days before it hardens up inside that can is my guess is what's yep. going to happen. Yep. So line up your rackets, tape up your rackets, and then just go for it. Okay. So so on this particular racket, because it's already got a clear coat down to here, we decided that we're going to just tape that off. We don't need to put clear coat on a gloss because we just want the whole racket glossy. So we're going to paint from here down to here. What I'm going to do is take off the, the tape off the grip, just go, you know, a quarter inch down. Uh, so when I tape it back up, I don't have a, a line from the clear coat. Um, I'm going to do a, a, just a thin layer, just enough to get it evenly coated. I don't want it to run, mm -hmm. but I want it to be evenly covered. And uh, we're going to weigh it before and after. So really on this racket, we're only going to have paint from here to here. So it really shouldn't affect um, balance or swing weight at all, uh, but we'll find out. Okay. All right. Let's go to the Bayardo Pro. Weight, balance, swing weight. We know we're going to, we know we're going to get a few grams of, of weight. It could affect the swing weight slightly because we're not putting paint up on the top, so we're actually putting more weight at the bottom. So it could, it could slightly reduce the swing weight, but that's why we're going to do a experiment. Okay. So swing weight unstrung, no placard is two eighty five, and so I'm going to guess that's going to probably be fully strung. You know, up in the three twenty range is my guess. Balance is the, the weight, one two, huh? Weight weight is three oh six point one grams and balance is thirty one two. So that balance will, will go up with some strings in it. And let's just check the uh the stiffness. I don't think paint is gonna affect the stiffness, but I don't know. Let's find out. It could have a very small impact. You wouldn't believe how many people have asked me can i paint my racket yeah <laughs> i'm like uh you could i don't recommend it and and by the way this is this is a one-way street once we put this paint on there there's no there's no taking it off it doesn't come off we can't uh, sand it you could sand it off if you had to but then you're going to ruin the the finish underneath mm. so so you know this is this is a one-way street make sure you're you're fully committed to having clear cut it's cool i've done it on a number of rackets and it looks it and looks we're great. just going to put a clear coat on this one i mean some people literally want to alter their yeah you can change the color racket yeah, to their alma can, mater you know what i do is I, t I would take a new pro staff and make it black is what i would do <laughs> wow so that's a 73 on horizontal it's a nice stiff racket H let's stiff. look at vertical. 73 okay. 73 and we'll look at vertical how you doing sir all right Vertical, vertical. We're going vertical, Harry. All right. Let's go. Let's go ballistic. Going ballistic. Great balls of fire. There it goes. Yes, sir. Looks, looks pretty flexy. Is it does it twice and it says oh 73 73 73 that's a that's a stiffy there huh. both directions i like it stiffy you do just like so, that american pie so do i <laughs> stiffler <laughs> all right so that's 73 73 so that's uh before paint we're gonna uh leave everything unaltered in this we're not going to string it or anything uh, we're going to paint it and then we're going to come back and test it again and my guess it'll be a few grams heavier uh the other specs probably similar uh and we'll find out okay
Perfect. So we're going to let Dan take it to the lab, his mad scientist racket lab. Backyard, basically. <laughs> we got to be more mysterious than that here. Okay. Because <laughs> I envision a dark warehouse with you and a bunch of stuff and some dead things in Hang jars on. in there. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> the mad dead scientist. rackets in, in, yeah. in jars in, in some yeah. kind of... Failed, exper <laughs> failed experiments. Rackets that actually shrunk, you know, like the head shrinkers. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> or the head fell off or, or exactly. dissolved. <laughs> yeah. I went a little too far on the sanding. All right. All right, so we'll see you after. Thank this you. episode is sponsored by my friends at Go Sport the makers of the most premium, durable, and the most organized bags you can get. Introducing their new 2.0 collection. We got the nine pack, my favorite backpack, and introducing a 12 pack. That's gonna be my bag right there. Check it all out and organize your tennis life at Go Sport. Dot com. All right, so it's been about a week now. My man Dan is back. He's got my brand new, I'll call it Pro Stock Blackout, since we're going to shine on camera now, just like the pros. Dan! Hey, Thanks for having me back. Oh, thank you for coming. My pleasure. And continue always. to come. Thank you. <laughs> so we got a bag with potentially my new blackout in it that uh, we've shined up a bit. Yep. You want to see it? Yes, All definitely. Right. Yep. So <laughs> so this is pretty exciting. I hadn't uh, done anyone else's racket before, so I was kind of nervous. If I mess up my racket, no big deal. If I mess up his racket, I'm going to feel really bad. <laughs> so It's all right. Slinko got my back. So, right, Norm? <laughs> you know, you see those pros playing out there with these shiny, glossy rackets. So we uh, we got a clear oh. coat on there, and you saw that in the, last, in the first part of the video. And this is what it looks like. Here, I want to bring you in a little closer just to... This would be better to see in the daylight, probably. But uh, it's pretty shiny. Yeah, I'll show you that. It's like a, it's like a, like a black Armani tuxedo now. Oh, we got like formality here. And if you want to compare it to the, the, the stock version. Oh, that's true. Black tie sort dinner. Of, sort of a, a matte black uh, non-gloss look. So this is the difference that a little coat, a clear coat will do. And we put it on the machine last time uh, to see if this clear coat changes the specs at all. So we're going to recheck it to see how much weight did that add and did it change the flex. Okay. So that's... So you can definitely tell that, you know, the light just bounces off of it and, you know, makes it like a disco ball. Um, you know, you see, I think that's why the pros always have gloss rackets because, like, I'm sure in what you're seeing now, this just pops, right? You're seeing more of a pop from the black because it's coming off of it with the light. So I do... I, when you, sh what I'm looking at here is I never knew there were lines here. <laughs> I, <laughs> I didn't, I never paid attention to it. When it's dull like that, I didn't, I never even looked. They're, they're subtle. It looks like a, the, the dial of a watch. I think it's a really cool design. Yeah. But it kind of, when you clear cut, everything kind of comes out, colors and graphics. Right. And, and I, on this one, because it was already clear coat along the top, I, I taped that off. I didn't re-clear coat that. So I only did clear coat from here down to here. Okay. So it, it would uh, probably have very minimal impact on the weight and balance. But uh, that's what we're going to check. But it sure, sure looks good. Okay. Let's take it to your favorite machine. My favorite machine. <laughs> All right. So we got Dan with his work wife here, also known as Bayardo. Maybe we're going to call it Bayarda. Bayarda By, By Team Pro. We'll call it, call it the BTP. There you go. Just for short. BTP. BTP. All right. So we got weight um, after paint is 307.2 on the weight. Mm -hmm. Balance is 31.2. Let's get a swing weight. Good 
grab ourselves a swing weight. Stay really still. Don't stop shaking. Silence. 286. 286. Yeah, let's catch some. HB, horizontal HB. Bend. bending. Horizontal bending. All right, save that. Ugh. Horizontal bending. I think as we get older, the horizontal bending. Yeah, it goes downhill real fast. <laughs> we should, they should not, we should not be allowed after a certain age. <laughs> Hey guys, how you doing? Weekend's almost here. I know. It's been a long ass week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we did. We're cleaning. <laughs> so that's a 74. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Zebra. 74. 74. Wow. What was it before? I'll tell you later. <laughs> I, think it, I think it was identical. I don't think a couple grams of clear coat is going to change anything there. But always nice to find out. I don't know what we're going to do if we lose this machine. Looks like we might have to buy one. We're going to have to just guess at it. We'll just bend it on the table. Exactly. I mean, that's what they used to do. That's, yes, yeah. Nothing wrong with that. 70... Whatever it was before. Six, no. 69. Do that again. Did it, did it get softer? Yes. <laughs> it got softer. It got softer. <laughs> right, Over let's, time. Let's do a retest. That's, a, that's a surprising. You know, it's just variance in the, in the measurement. There is no variance in the measurement. Sure. It's probably plus or minus one. 69 that's again. Weird. What was it before? 73. How can it go down? I'll tell you what. Here, this this could affect it. Here, let's flip it over. Okay. Yep. Because maybe. Maybe it's uneven. Just maybe it's uneven. Uneven vertical balance. So when you hit when you hit your your backhand one way and then you flip the racket over and hit it another. It's the way the grip was put on. Could be just the grip because that just could be yeah the softness right there. Yeah. Doesn't take much to affect this measurement. That's bending a lot. It'll bend the same every time. It's just how much. No. 69. What? That's weird. Yeah. Maybe I switched racket signing while you weren't looking. That is weird. That is weird. I don't think a. Well, I don't think a clear coat from here to here no. is going to affect. It's not going to soften it. It'll stiffen it, I would think. You, you think it could stiffen it. Yeah. Want to try another one? Here, let's just try a regular 300 just for kicks. Just for kicks. This isn't really a scientific at this point because our control measure is, uh, could have variance. But who knows? Whoa. 78. What the heck? What the heck? What the heck? What, half an inch? Well, that's a regular that's 300. A, that's a, that's, and that's a 300? Mm hmm. It's a oh, half inch longer. Oh, yeah, well, that would make a difference. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. That would make a difference. Huh. So that doesn't. Let's do this again. <laughs> now that we got a bigger number. <laughs> that's a... Well, we know strong and unstrung will give us a different vertical bending right. by about three points. But they not... were unstrung both times. These are both unstrung. Huh? Okay. There it is. Well, we got it three times, four times. So. So we're gonna we're gonna have to say we don't know what the heck that means. Okay. But let's. Uh, That's interesting. But let's look at the other specs. There All right. Go. So let's take a look at the numbers, Dan. Um. One point or one, one gram. One gram. One point one gram of <laughs> weight in paint. Balance is the same. Swing weight one. One point. Yeah. 
horizontal bending, one, one point off. So that's just variance in the measurement. And then we don't know what the heck, uh, 69 versus 73. So when we added the clear coat, the vertical bending went from 73 to 69, and that makes no sense at all. Because uh, it's, you know, probably three microns thick of, of clear coat wouldn't affect the vertical bending. So we don't know why that happened, and we're just going to say the Tune Pro was, uh, was tired today. Maybe it was tired today. Huh. <laughs> That's all we can think of. <laughs> That's weird, though. Huh. So, so the way, the, this ra in other words, you won't feel the difference between this racket and a, and a non-clear coat racket in terms of playability. So the answer, uh, so here, here's what I was concerned about. I looked at the can of paint, and it weighed, I don't know, 300 grams, for mm -hmm. example, a full right. can of paint. And I did, uh, call it 10 rackets right. with a can of paint. It was nearly empty. So I'm thinking, am I adding, um, uh, you know, 300 grams divided by 10? Am I adding 30 grams of weight per racket if I use a whole can of paint on a racket? So that would make it unplayable, right? right. If you add 30 grams to a racket. So obviously what's happening is the, the paint, as you spray it on, of course, not much of it's hitting the racket. Most right. of it's just going into the air. And that that's hitting the racket, as it's drying, a lot of that... Um, uh, stuff in the paint is evaporating into the oh, air right and then what's left is only one gram of paint so right. out of a 300 gram can of paint i end up with 10 grams on 10 rackets of weight <laughs> uh, so it's not a very efficient use of, of the 30 dollars of paint but the point is you won't feel the difference it won't hurt the racket you can clear coat it you can do clear coat it twice um, and it's not going to affect the playability that we can that we can determine from the machine Okay, let's string it up and then take it on the court and see if uh, the paint does anything. All right, so and see if and see if the paint stays on when you hit the frame. That that too. <laughs> okay, all right. So we'll see you on the court. So we just got off the court playing with the glossed up rackets that my man Dan did. Are you hiding the spray can from me? <laughs> what makes you think that? <laughs> We're not graffiti. We're not American graffiti. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we use, I don't know what it's called, but you know what it is. So this is Eastwood 2K Aero Spray in a gloss clear. Okay. okay, and that's what it looks like, as I've shown you before. It shines off the sun very nicely. Um, Dan, what did you think after you glossed your, the feel of it? So, you know, we, we glossed up a bunch of rackets and, um, you know, rackets that I played with previously. And then we, uh, after we glossed them up, we, we put them all back on the machine. And they only had maybe a gram to two grams more weight by putting the gloss on, so spread over the whole racket. So really, no weight difference uh, on the machine. Um, you know, things like flex, you know, they might have varied slightly, but it's hard to tell when you put rackets on a machine over in different times. So the question is, when you take it on on the court, does it feel dramatically different, uh, subtly different? Honestly, it, it, it's pretty hard to tell any difference, I think. Um, I don't know in my mind, you know, because I think there's some clear coat on there that's a hard, hard paint. You know, is it going to make it stiffer or softer? But after I, I hit with them and I play with them, I think they feel great. I don't know that there's any major difference in doing it. I don't think it hurts the racket in any way, shape, or form uh, at all. Um, and if you like the pro stock look, uh, you know, that's kind of what we're doing here. This is more intended to be a cosmetic change and not to really change the racket plays. But mm -hmm. there could be subtle differences. You know, Harry 
might feel different. In mine, the, when it's glossed, I felt it a little bit more muted. I felt like there was like a rubber band here. You know how they put yeah. a rubber band yeah, in just to dampen it? Slight vibration just a dampening. slight vibration dampening. That could be. Um, that was the main thing that I felt uh, when I, uh, but with yours though, that was the, the funny thing. I love the way yours felt though. I felt really um, crisp. Yeah, the feel came through. I felt the ball kind of trampoline and uh, catapult off your strings. And I felt a nice little vibration into my hand. Yeah. Um, so it could be very by racket. We don't, you know, we could have to play around with a little bit more. Mm -hmm. This is probably the crispest, but this is freshly strung, um, maybe played with for an hour. Gut main. Gut main power pads you know so there's some some variances here anyway but this does feel very crisp um i, I did play with it uh, i didn't play with it before i lost it mm -hmm. i just took a brand new racket and uh this one in particular happens to be a a, a, a v14 that i <laughs> he fed it up <laughs> i i not i didn't clear coat it i i black glossed it so now oh. this, this is black black gloss paint so you know if you don't like the color of your racket and you want to turn it into a uh, a, a, a pro stock looking racket that's the other option is to use as black so my man dan here took a v14 regular the 11 one ounce version and fed it up so this is a customized fed uh, lead lead you know and even painted it black with a power patch strung just like fed with the gut main and the alu rough cross even the stringlings are in place um i felt like this I don't want to say it's better than the Fed, but it's a little, it, it, it cut through the air a little faster than the regular Fed, a little smoother. It, it didn't have as much head, um, head throw, as yeah. I call it. Yeah. So I actually thoroughly enjoyed yours. Um, yeah. Maybe I have I to play surprised. with mine a little bit more, but I yeah. enjoyed yours. Well, <laughs> two, two very different rackets. Um, and, uh, you know, is that, what's this head size on that? 100. Yeah. So, so we like the look. Uh, we like yeah. we like the, the way these feel. Um, it's a lot of fun. You can you can do it at home. You gotta make sure you get the racket really clean. I use either some acetone or alcohol uh, to make sure there's no fingerprints or grease or smudges. You can spray this stuff on not the black one, but the clear. You can spray it right on the racket, um, even with the strings in it. You can't even tell. So, so fun. you didn't sand this down or anything. You just literally no. just went over. Just it. just hit it with acetone. You take the grommets off. I did do the grommet on this one. I took the grommet off. How about the side grommets, it. not the not, side? Not the okay. side. Got yeah, it. Say. Okay. I need some glossy. This stuff's strong enough where it won't crack. So. No, it's it's very, very strong. This is a, a two-part paint. Oh, here, hold that. Mm. Sorry. It's really cool. So you take this, you put it in the bottom, you put it on the floor, you press it down, and there's a, a two two parts inside the can, and this breaks the can, it breaks the set, and so the hardener and the paint mixed together and it's only good for 48 hours okay. after that it just turns to sludge um, but that's why it works so well it's a real professional two-part paint the same as you get someone spraying on automotive paint in a, in a spray booth if you get like a take a clear uh, paint out of the you know ace hardware that isn't this two-part paint it's not nearly as hard and when you hit the tennis ball on the racket it'll actually scuff the the clear coat a little bit right but so not this stuff this, this stuff yeah not, not a problem all right Okay, my man, Dan, right. thank you so much for uh, being the scientist you are. <laughs> thank you. I, I like to be in the crazy mad scientist. <laughs> Guys, thank you for watching Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis.